Hello guys, Savat the Mighty here, aka Doom Piggy, and I'm here with another Eve Echoes video. So today I'm actually going to go over the Mahler, or Mahler, however you prefer to pronounce it. This ship here is a T6 Amar ship. It specializes in defense and lasers, and is my personal favorite tier 6 cruiser. Right now, I believe on the market you can pick this ship up for anywhere between I would say 64 and 70 million. Let's have a look here and just take take a gander, see what it uh what it actually goes for. Yeah, so right now 62 all the way up to 70, 73. So in between 62 and 73 million you're going to be able to pick this ship up for. I like this ship over the navy the Omen Navy issue. The Omen Navy issue is extremely good ship as well in its own right, but I prefer this one. I do prefer the more tanky build, and that's what this ship excels in. So on this ship, the bonuses that it gets for armor operation, it gets 4% per level. If you have this at level 5, that's a maximum of 20% armor resistances. Cruiser Command Bonus, it gets 5% medium laser damage and minus 10% medium laser capacitor need per level for a total of 25% more damage and a minus 10 for a total of 50%, minus 50% medium laser capacitor need. And these Amar ships using lasers, this capacitor need is probably one of the most important things. It does help the ships be very stable if you do have those skills trained up. If not, they're still usable, but you do have a bit of capacitor issues. Now with this ship only having 4 high slots, this plus 5 or total of 25% damage means that it's actually working as if it has 5 lasers. And so that's actually pretty good. I like this version of it. Uh, some of the higher tiers it actually does lose a gun slot if you go to the Muller Guardian in exchange to be more defensive or more team defensive actually. And the Muller itself is probably the best one for soloing because it does have a combination of tank and DPS. If we look down here in the basic info, its uh, overall defense just starting out is about 13,648 with a 262 flight velocity, 3 AUs per second warp speed, power grid output of 807 megawatts before skills, capacitor of 3,235 gigajoules, and a cargo hold capacity of 960. This ship is its tough, and it can punch up quite well, and that's exactly what we're going to show today. So if you're just jumping into this ship, it's amazing. It can carry you through all of the advanced missions with no problems whatsoever. Right now, we're actually going to go through the fitting. And so this ship, I actually have my good gear on because I want to take it out and do some of the hard tier missions with it. So I do have four of the uh, Corpus C-type medium pulse lasers on here. With my skills, the optimal range is going to set at 14.74, accuracy falloff of 6.3, tracking speed of 47.46. In the mid slots, I'm using an OPR, medium energy Nosferatu, with an optimal range of 9.45, an accuracy falloff of 5.15, and giving it basically a 4.60 range, so you're at 50%. I got an interruptive stasis webifier. This one here, it's up for debate. I like it because it does help slow down the frigates that you're actually going to run into, but there is still something to be said for a warp scram as well. I don't know, whatever you prefer. My hood ornament, I got a uh, Mark 7 Vespa. It's just sitting in here. It gives me uh, a little bit of kinetic damage since all of my damage is mainly EM and thermal. For when I do actually get through the uh, shields, this will help me blast the uh, armor a little bit harder. I got a C-type medium armor wrapper that is repping for 685 every 7.19 seconds. Two Corpus C-type adaptive armor hardeners on here. They're the best that I can get. <laughs> they work wonders with this ship. And I have one Corpus C-type reactive armor hardener. This slot here is up for debate, and what I mean by that is basically you could put whatever you want here. 
the ship itself I like to have an afterburner just to have a bit more mobility so I did put in the C-type medium afterburner and this does help me whenever I am fighting frigate packs so I'll be able to get a little bit more speed maybe realign so I can get my gun straight on and shoot them and take them out or if I just need to get out of a, a bad situation set some range I'm able to actually do that and dictate distance a little better however this slot here you don't have to have this ship is it's already a pretty zippy ship you can look at the navigation it does 335.36 with my skills so that's 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 pretty decent so that being said you could actually put in here uh, oh crap button if you like oh crap buttons I'm a big big prominent to that so you can have your uh, armor hardeners on you can have the uh, armor extender here you can use a damage control a damage control would make you more tanky all of the time by just upping all of your regular resistances as well as kind of give you an oh crap button that would actually put the resistances of this ship up for a very small amount of time up to over the 90 percent which would be very good as well also if you're more of a damage person you can actually up the damage by putting the uh, heat sink in here a heat sink would also be very good just whatever you prefer it really depends on what you're trying to do obviously if you're doing content that you can just sip through and the tank is tough enough be my guest throw some more damage on there now for the rigs I use an auxiliary nano pump too and I have an anti-explosive pump too to cover up the explosive hole on this ship so on here everything cold you're looking at a EM resistance of 60 thermal of 48 kinetic of 40 and explosive of 58 over here like normal, I have my semiconductor memory cell prototypes. Just have a couple of those thrown in there. They help with the overall power grid. The power grid on this ship, it is stable. That is with the uh, Nosferatu at 21%. And that is with having everything running. Overall, not bad at all. On this ship, you really have nothing to be afraid of. You can get in there, do what you have to do. You can be lazy about it. And if you do have a little bit of trouble, I mean, you shouldn't. <laughs> so if you, like I said, if you're having a little bit of trouble, you can always replace that to make this thing even tankier than it already is. But they should be able to do every single one of the advanced missions, no problem. You should just be able to go out there and do it at your leisure. It can even actually do the hard missions. Now, I haven't taken it against any of the higher tier hard missions, but for the basic ones, it does just fine. And I'm actually going to take that out right now and show you guys. So the encounter that I picked up here is uh, Mining Defense. It is hard. So this will be a Tier 8 uh, news mission. It is going to have that last wave of all the frigates who warp scram you and web you and do all of the, the nasty stuff that can be very problematic for ships. But this Tier 6 ship can go in there and not even care. Well, before we do that, this adaptive hardener is going to adjust itself, but right now, this ship's total defense is 26,158, with an EM resistance of 78, thermal 72, kinetic 68, and explosive 77. So just out of the box, it has extremely high resistances with this fit, which it should, it's running three hardeners, and it does have the uh, resistance hole filled here. All right, let's go ahead and go to the mission. <laughs> now, warp drive active. The armor hardeners themselves, you can pretty much have them running all the time. They're not really going to do anything for the shield, but this thing is it's stable. It's one of those kind of fire and forget ships. You can put everything on. It doesn't really matter if it's on or not it will stay stable. The only time you're going to have any type of trouble is if, and only if, they have a lot of Nosferatus themselves. Alright, so what type of damage does it do? Once it gets into range, which is about that 14, it does pretty decent damage. Now it's not going to be like your no Omen Navy issues. It's not going to be like your uh, battle cruisers, but this cruiser itself 
it's able to put out decent damage and still be really tanky and just not even care. Alright. So one ship is down already. Pick up our loot. Now we're going to attack this Blackbird. The Blackbird is having the uh, Nosferatu on us, which is going to be draining some of our energy, but as you can see, we're not even in any type of questionable trouble yet. You can turn on your armor heart or your armor wrapper and leave it on if you want to, or you can monitor it and try to keep your your capacitor up if you wish. Either way is just fine. The fact that this ship can literally take you through all of the advanced and even start the hard missions is is an impressive. You can do it very easily and with no worry, no threat. So even if you happen to have a bad connection, get knocked out of the connection for some reason, and heck, sometimes even if you fall asleep <laughs> while you're playing. Uh, that guy's at 10. We're going to go ahead and hit him. So the MOA would be the counterpart to the this ship, the, the Mallor of the Mauler. The MOA has the, uh, the shield defense up. So the MOA is also going to be a pretty good ship and could actually hit higher resistances, I think, with... Uh, all of the shield mods that it gets than this ship can. However, if you're like me and you like lasers, these Amar ships are kind of where you're going to be at. So as you can see, wave one, we are just zipping around. We're doing our 328. Hanging out, having a good old time. Nothing to fear, but fear itself. Now, along with any other ship, you really don't want to be right there on the spawn point when a new wave spawns. You can get hit with a lot of weppers and scrammers, and all of that can end up being very, very nasty. But with this ship, you are much more safe from doing that than you would be in other ships. All right, we'll turn on our armor wrapper. So we let them do a bit of damage to us. The missiles on this are going to be one of the bigger threats. Let's go ahead and take a look at what our defense is now. So now we're sitting at 78, 72, 69, and 77 after the armor has adjusted, still giving us a total defense of 26,725. This is holding more than fine. We're actually regaining armor to be up to our full amount. And we're sitting in range of torpedoes, we're sitting in range of everything with these last two ships. You can pick up your loot. Fly in circles. <laughs> and do pretty much whatever you want to do while you're flying this ship. You are safe. It's... It's good. The only time there is ever going to be any types of threats, and, and we'll see those, is when the new waves spawn. And when the new waves spawn, you should still be safe in this ship. Now, this ship is going to do much better for you the more that you invest in it. As you've seen here, I'm not actually using Tier 3 rigs. I could always upgrade those to the Tier 3 versions. And 2, I'm fighting Kaldari ships. So I have to use my resistances for everything. If you liked to fight Amar ships, you could actually put that um, explosive resistance into EM and get even more defense out of there because you're not going to need the explosive resistance. Or if you prefer fighting Galente ships, you can put it in, I believe it's primarily thermal that they do. They do thermal and kinetic. So since you already have decent thermal resistances, I would imagine you would want to put that in the kinetic and you can get more defense out of there, so you can really tailor this to what you're fighting and make it even even better. Along with the uh, adaptive and the reactive hardeners, it's going to increase your resistance even more, and you can get a lot out of the ship. The ship is very customizable for what you're fighting, 
and it just it does work and it can do work and it can punch up much better than most other ships while being much safer at doing so so that's why this ship wins my award for best tier 6 cruiser if you're going for lasers now obviously if you're not using lasers it's not the best So it's not going to win any games for killing anything at speed, or I'm sorry, win any awards for killing anything at speed. It does kill kind of slow, but it is it is relatively safe. You don't have to worry, and it's a tier 6 cruiser that's just able to sit in here and have fun on these hard missions. It can earn back its money quite quickly. Alright, so round two, we are pretty much right up here in the, the spawn point. So round two we have to worry about, we ha do have a disruptor on us, it looks actually looks like a scrambler. It's fine though. We don't care. We do have the web to try to slow guys down. Now, if they're just using afterburners, the web will help. Targeting will be just fine. One of the things you can also do too, if you do notice that your damage is getting kind of lower, come back out. So I have my orbit set to 7km just so I can get full advantage of the Nosferatu. But if you orbit or even just move away, you'll see that the damage will increase on these smaller ships. You can reset up your targets after that. Keep an eye out for loot that drops <laughs> and just continue the game. I mean, with the small ships taken out, there's absolutely no threat here. Uh, the next thing we want to get rid of is the Nosferatu. It is going to be taking our capacitor away, but this thing is stable and we are capacitor draining back, so again, there's nothing to worry about there. If you need to, some of these guys will get a little bit farther away, and that's why I like having the uh, afterburner. I can hit the afterburner and actually get my distances all set back up if they do get further away. Especially these snipers, they do like to move away from you. Alright. So again, this is a T6 cruiser. Just chilling in this hard mission. Not doing the damage output that uh, bigger ships would do, but also not in any danger whatsoever. I'm not having to worry about range tanking. I don't have to worry about anything. This ship is perfect, especially if you're one of those people who like to uh, sit in bed, watch a little bit of TV, and possibly fall asleep while you're playing. <laughs> I have heard that story quite a bit of times that people have done that. And with this ship, that would actually solve that issue. If you have to go in a hurry, that's another thing that would solve the issue. And if you have your auto orbits, auto fires, and everything set up, it may not be perfect, but it can get the job done. Especially on the advanced missions, you can pretty much AFK the entire mission on advance. And you got no issues. So if you're just getting into Tier 6 and picking this up, or even if you're in Tier 7 and for some reason lost your battle cruiser and are trying to build up to something, this is a great ship to actually uh, put some investment into and have for a backup ship because it is able to take out and do so much work. Relatively cheap too. Now I have uh, some of my top end gear on here. So without the top end gear it would be a, a little less tanky than this is but I still don't think you'd have too much of a problem especially if you're just doing the advanced missions. If you just have the regular gear on here, if you have some Meta 5, then you'll even be okay with that. 
All right, so our next two waves are going to be the harder waves. That's where we're actually going to start seeing the little ships swarm us. And the little ships still do have the ability to swarm us if they hit us with webs and stuff like that. The bigger ships can, can hit us pretty good. And when that happens, that will be the most danger that you're actually going to be in with this ship is at the beginning of those spawns if you're staying at the close range. So we will showcase that and see if we can survive it. Let's go ahead and approach. Let's turn that on. Let's get into our optimal range. And we are flying straight on, so... Alright. So that guy was able to get a bunch of good hits on us because we were flying straight on. But it's fine. It's the last ship. We don't really have anything to worry about. Let's have a look and see if our uh, defenses have changed at all. Nope, they're still sitting at the same. So yeah, at this point you basically grab a Snickers, enjoy a little snack, let your guy go, talk with your corp, do what you gotta do while you're earning money. So this thing is doing 308 DPS right now, 336.57 with the hood ornament. Like I said, you might not even need the afterburner. You could throw more damage on there if you're feeling frisky. This is a tank ship, so if you are going to be using it as not a tank ship and want to outfit this without any of the armor stuff and throw in damage, you can, but at that point, I would just say fly an Oni. If you're going for damage, do the Oni. If you want to be safe, do the Mauler. Mallor, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> So this nag is a tanky boy. The rats with their uh, increased hit points definitely does show off in these missions, especially when you have lower DPS. But it's okay, he'll eventually go down. All right, next shot should do it. We should still be right here, and this is gonna be the dangerous wave, or the first dangerous wave. So we have a couple of small ships here. They did spawn out a lot farther out than we even wanted. So let's just go ahead and approach. We don't need to use our afterburner. All right, let's start. Slow them down. Now this guy is getting under our guns a little bit, so we will turn on our afterburner to counteract his speed. And we're going to do a sharp turn here. this guy. Now again, as you can see, he was on us. We do have a little bit of trouble hitting whenever they get close, but we're still not danger. Take out this guy. Let's see if he's going to do anything fancy to us. Let's actually approach him. I wonder if he has a web. We're at the 11k in. These pithy Koraxes almost always have a web. We are right on top of him. Let's bump him. Haha, oh, we missed. <laughs> Alright, let's hit him with the web. guy. Yeah, so this guy didn't even come equipped with a web or anything. He's just useless. We'll 
so this wave, wave three, not even an issue. We were actually able to even just have fun and play around with the ships. Didn't care. And again, it is cap stable. It's cap stable at about 21% with everything running. We don't need to have the afterburner running all that much though. So we can turn that off and probably build up some of our cap, which I do kind of want to get some of the cap back for the next wave, because if there is a lot of guys with vampires, then they could drain our cap down, and I, I don't really want to be in a position there. So this ship already made 1,102,000 back. I'm just sitting here having a conversation with you guys, being safe. And again, like I said, if you happen to lose your battle cruiser or whatever it was, having one of these ships as a backup is great. And if you're just getting a tier six, I would say this guy is a very strong contender alongside the Oni Navy issue. Omen Navy issue, Oni. <laughs> I really do prefer the tankier ships. I think they are safer. And if you're playing casually and you play solo most of the time, this is probably, in my opinion, the better choice. This ship can punch up so much. It just has so much it can, it can do. Now, that being said, why don't I have a, a, a Malar or Malar Guardian? Well, the Guardian uses the... it takes away one of your high slots, so you actually have three. With that removed, and we can actually look at that here. Okay. Where is it? Smaller Guardian. Alright, so this one does get tracking speed. It does lose a laser. Still does have the 5% medium laser damage. So you are going to be doing less damage overall. And your trade-off for doing less damage is a little bit more of a tanky ship with its hit points. However, you're doing less damage. Now, your mid slots, you still only have the two. And if you're going to be putting one of those, oops, if you're going to be putting one of those as your Nosferatu, so you can try to keep cap stable, then your other one is going to be the shield, the group, not group shield booster, the, hmm, I forget what they're called, but they're the, the group shield modules, the armor link module. And the armor link module itself, I don't believe it's nowhere near the same as the shield link module. It actually shares damage. So if you are in a fleet, it is going to share the damage with your other ships, and then it's going to reduce the damage they take by 60%, which is transferred to you. So for soloing, even though it may seem like a great upgrade, I really don't think it is. I think just using the regular Mallor or Mauler is going to serve you better than upgrading to the Guardian. That is just my personal opinion. I could be wrong on that. There might be people who think that the Guardian is much better for, for doing the solo stuff. If that's the case, then take that route. Go ahead and upgrade and let me know. Let me know how those work out. I'd love to hear that story. But overall, I do think that this one, even if you have the ability to get the other ones, if you're just using it for yourself, is going to be the better of them. as you can see here again we've just been talking looking at stuff I did let myself get kind of far away there it would have been a lot quicker if I didn't do that but I wanted to take a look at that ship and do some stuff why we're waiting for these guys to die it is an amazing ship So we're down to that Naga, the Naga itself is going to be troublesome at best. Not because the Naga is going to really do anything to us, it's really because the 
Naga just has a lot of hit points, and this thing doesn't have all that much damage. Our hood ornament's going in for the kill. Maybe not. Hey, hood ornament. Hey, there you go, little buddy. He means well. So would there ever be a reason to put a small drone on this ship? I can't think of one. Maybe you guys can, but I can't. I guess if you don't have any other drone to put in there, putting in a small drone would be okay. But I haven't really seen that the medium drones are having any type of issue hitting the frigates. Alright. So our capacitor is built back up. This last wave is going to be the most troublesome of them all. Once we get there. This little ship does work. It's so safe. One of my favorite ways to fly is safe. And there is something to say for the adrenaline rush that you get from being risky. But there's also something to say when you have something exceedingly safe that you don't really have to worry about. Alright, so these guys, we are going to go ahead and orbit out. Alright, so I'm moving away from this guy, because he's going to have to try to catch up to me. She is doing an amazing job of. Let's go ahead and turn that on, and let's turn this on. Excellent. Next on our list is him. right away. Let's see if we can get this guy in a straight line. Ish. There we go. Alright. Next we have this uh, condor here, shouldn't be an issue. Now oh, we can hit him with the web though, that might help a little bit. Look at him, they like to just zip all around us. We don't need that for the time being. This is the most dangerous wave. It's an orbit on him. And it's no threat whatsoever. Yeah, some of the frigates are still a little bit hard to hit. Web them down. Move in and out. But again, not really a threat. This ship is just such a beast. everything my battle cruiser can do, it just can't put out the damage. I would even say it probably actually has a similar, if not tankier, tank than my battle cruiser that is set up for a tank fit.
Alright, our E-War is uh, dead with this. So we don't have to worry about that anymore. And what do we got here? Another pithy Korax. This guy doesn't appear to have any type of webs, uh, uh, newts, or anything like that on us. So he is literally just a sitting duck. Nothing he can do. That. Approach this guy. Uh, you're 40k away. That's not doing anything. One of the things I can do is uh, set orbit on that loot. Let's turn that back on. Get us a little bit of uh, energy transfer going on. This last Condor, it's just been sitting out of range of anything. He's like that friend you bring along to the battle who doesn't really help. He's like, I'm here though! <laughs> when he does get a bit closer, we'll take him out. He's really no threat. Matter of fact, I mean, this mission is basically done. It's all, all but killing time now. Look at those two. They're over there being buddies. So this Drake is a uh, tanky boy, kind of like the Nagas, so... There we go. All right, you. Let's take you out now. over to the drake. You're trying to, to give some heals. You want to give some love to the drake. Oh, you're dead. <laughs> Back to our drake. Uh, let's orbit that. Hi, drake. We have some loot to pick up. Don't mind us. It's so safe, so comforting. It's just easy mode. Again, this is a great ship to have as a backup ship. And also a great ship to get into if you're just hitting the tier 6. Or even if you have been in tier 6 for a little bit of time and you're having issues doing things, it's a wonderful ship to jump into. That being said, if you do like rail guns or the hybrids or whichever you want to call them, then the MOA, which is the shield tank version of this, would also be a wonderful ship to get into. I do not have a MOA, nor have I ever flown one, so I don't know how cap stable they can be, but I assume they can get similar, if not just as good, as the Drake as far as stability goes, because the lasers do take quite a bit of uh, capacity to be used. Also, too, if you've been training into missiles and you're just looking for another ship to fly, you're not taking advantage of the damage bonus that these ships offer. But I know you can put missiles on them as well, and they don't drain cap at all. Now, so you can throw your missiles on one of these ships, you'll do a lot less damage overall, but you can still be just as tanky in a MOA or a uh, Malar Mahler. And fly around using that, so you don't have to use the weapons that they suggest, but you are losing a lot of the bonuses if you do that. And with the nerf to the rapids, I don't I don't really see why you would want to, unless you are heavily invested in the missiles. Maybe your massive amount of skills will make up for the, the damage bonus loss. Yeah, totally easy. Nothing, nothing to even fear. No scary moments, no nothing. Just smooth sailing through the entire mission. Now, it does take a little bit of time. Like I said, it's not going to kill anything fast, but 
it is able to do it, and it's able to actually go through the advanced missions much quicker. They're much less tanky, and you don't really have much to worry about. Getting loot from you? Doesn't look that way. All right. So yeah, hard missions. Able to do it perfectly. Nothing to really worry about. Pick up loot and then go home. There it is. So, that's pretty much all I have to say about this ship. You can, like I said, fit it different ways, but it is a, a ship that is supposed to be a tank. And if you are going to be piloting it, I would recommend sticking with what it does best and putting a big tank on it. Yeah, do I have this over tanked for what I'm doing? Most likely. But that's what the ship does. It tanks. It makes sure you're safe. You jump into areas, you can be okay. And that's what's so great about it. It is so safe, so good, so easy, and can do missions far above its um, its tech Warp level. Alright, well let me know what you guys think about the ship, the Mahler Maller. <laughs> Go ahead and leave me a comment, and I will try to respond to it. I do try to respond to every single comment that is left on the channel. I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.